Let's dive in into today's question, which is how do I find my unique style in lettering? And is it essential to have one? Welcome to Open Studio Podcast, space for lettering artists, illustrators, and creatives who are determined to thrive in their passion. I'm Martina Flora, and I've been through the ups and downs of building a successful creative business. From struggling to make ends meet to achieving my dream of becoming an award-winning lettering designer, I've learned valuable lessons along the way. Now, I'm here to share those lessons, strategies, and tips so that your journey can be smoother. Whether you're looking to turn your passion into a career or want insights to boost your creative business, this podcast is your guide. Join me on the Open Studio Podcast and let's make your creative dreams a reality. Hello and welcome back to Open Studio. I'm Martina Flora and we are continuing, of course, with this special series of episodes in which I answer the most frequently asked questions around how to build a career as a learning artist or illustrator. What are the things that I have to have into account? How do I get started? How do I market myself? How do I monetize my skills? And how do I promote my work? This and more we'll be answering in this series of episodes that are snappy and short. And I want to remind you that I have collected all of the answers to your questions, to the 10 questions that we'll be answering on a guide that you can go ahead and download for free on my website. And you can find it on martinaflor.com forward slash guide and download the guide for free. So regardless of whether you have listened to all of the episodes or not, I think it is a great idea to have all of these questions in one place, because also in that guide, I have included stories that I have collected throughout, stories and anecdotes that I have collected throughout my career as a learning artist that I think can be really empowering, encouraging. And so I will recommend you to go ahead and download the guide on martinaflor.com forward slash guide. It is totally for free. And if you like it, share it with the other people that might find it useful. Now let's dive into, uh, into today's question, which is how do I find my unique style in lettering? And is it essential to have one? This is a great question. And it's also a frequently asked question. And I want to tell you that discovering your unique style really takes time. So you have to, you have to budget for that. You have to understand that building or creating your own style takes time first and involves experimentation. So what I would, what I would recommend to find your own unique style is first be patient. It's not going to come out on the first try. So be patient, experiment. So I want you to try various techniques. I would recommend you to to explore different inspirations and to understand what are your interests because your style will emerge from a combination of all of that. First, it will emerge over time, so it will be built over time, but it, it will also be based on a combination of first, the techniques that you master, the different inspirations that you're interested in. So all of this creates a a unique mix that is going to then have an impact on your style. Now, this doesn't mean that all your work will look the same because I think this is this is a common misconception that having a style is doing the same thing over and over again. So you have to stick to a certain color palette or you have to stick to a certain lettering style and you have to stick to a certain composition. And at the end, I see many artists doing that in order to find a style and find a distinctive distinctive style. And at the end, this style that they create for themselves ends up limiting themselves. And it creates, instead of promoting their creativity, it actually hinders it. And you don't want that. Your style is the one that evolves and comes out as you create your best work. And it's also ever evolving. You know, the the style that you have or, or the type of pieces that you create in, in the very beginning will evolve over time and your style will evolve with you. So it will evolve with you because your interests will shift. 
your sources of inspiration will shift. Just to tell you a quick story, I remember that as I started or as I started my career as a lettering artist here in Germany, my color palettes were really toned down just because my environment or like the graphic art to which I was exposed had a certain tone and, and I kind of absorbed that and that had an impact on my work. So all my work had a very, the, the, the color palettes that I was using in my work were really toned down. And at some point in my career, I was invited to speak at a conference in Lima. So I traveled there to speak at the conference and I, I took my family with me and we did a trip ar around the country. And I was fascinated by the myriad of colors that I found in Lima and, and, and all around Peru because we travel across Peru. And when I came back from that trip, my color schemes completely shifted. So all of the colors and, and the color schemes that I have taken inspiration from through, during that trip, they had an immediate impact on my work. So that was still my work and that, that continued to be my style or that it was still my style, but your interests, your inspirations will have a huge impact on your work and it will evolve over time. So what I mean with this is that don't think that having a style is sticking to one thing and doing it over and over and over again, because that may become your own like creative gauge and you don't want that. Hey, real quick, you know that I don't run any ads on this podcast and I don't sell anything. The only ask I could ever have is that you help me spread the word. Let's empower more lettering artists, illustrators, and creatives to make a living with their skills, create beautiful work, and build a thriving business doing what they love. The key to making this happen is if you could take just a moment to rate, review, and share this podcast. It's as simple as a 10-second review or one tap of the thumb your support will mean the world to me and more importantly it could change the world for someone else now back to the show so you could be a very versatile lettering designer and you could respond to every assignment uniquely with a unique approach uh, but all your designs will have an underlying thread that binds them together and it could be color it could be the use of, of space. It could be the simplicity or the complexity of your work. So I want to invite you to refrain from settling down on a certain, on a certain style too early. If you commit to a particular style too soon, it may limit your creativity and hinder your growth as a learning designer. I want you to consider yourself as a visual storyteller because you are a visual storyteller. Your lettering serves the purpose of telling a story and broadening your vocabulary as a lettering artist means enhancing or expanding your ability to approach various styles. So according to the project and the story that you need to tell, you can use one or other lettering style. You can use certain words or you can choose to use certain words, which in lettering art, they translate onto lettering styles and tell that story in the best way possible. So what you will want as a lettering artist is to explore as many styles of lettering as possible. You will want to explore script lettering and sans serif and serif lettering and black letter and many others out there. And your style, when you start experimenting with all of these different lettering styles, your style will evolve beyond a restricted color scheme or the tendency to repeat the same style. Now, the things you're drawn to and interested in will also influence your style. And if you're inspired by vintage design, for instance, it is very likely that your style will reflect that influence. And lastly, style is not something you can force. It's not something that you say like, okay, this is my style and I will stick to this. No, it naturally evolves and emerges as you progress and, and as you create more work. And 
I want to tell you a story in my own personal development as a, as a lettering artist. At the beginning of my career, I initiated a project that was called letter collection, lettercollections.com. You can go ahead and, and, and check it out. It's still online. It's lettercollections.com. And I created the website with, with my reduced uh, HTML skills. And, and with this project, I set the goal of designing and sending a postcard every day. So that was the goal designing and sending a postcard every day and it was you know it was actually a very uh, ambitious goal because i had on top of the work that i was doing as a lettering artist i had to create one original artwork every day finish it and send it out so each postcard or the goal of each postcard was to explore a different lettering style and the fact that i was doing a different style every time expanded my stylistic palette tremendously. So I was able to draw so many different styles and on each new postcard I would draw or I would tackle or I would approach a new different style. And that really expanded, as I said, my vocabulary as a lettering artist. After that project, which was really time consuming and I was happy when it ended, but after that project, I was like, well, I could tell any story that I want. I'm not afraid of any lettering style out there. I'm not afraid of any lettering shape or I am not a, a letter shape, sorry. And I'm not afraid of tackling any project. And what is funny about it is that although when you look at the project, when you look at the, at the 100 postcards that I created for that project and everyone who looks at it, although I was, you know, creating a distinct design for each postcard, a lot of people that looked at the project, told me, hey, those designs look very Martina Flor. Like, and, and in my head, in my mind, each postcard is unique. Each postcard is different from the other. I wanted to do that specifically, and I did it. And nevertheless, people recognize these post postcards as Martina Flores postca postcards because there seems to be an underlying thread that they recognize that is distinct from my work. So a style, your style is going to come out eventually. And is the more you do, the more you create, the more styles and um, an experimentation you do, the more you will start discovering these little details, these little gems that make your work, your work. So I hope you have enjoyed this episode. I'm so glad that you are here to talk about a style and I'm looking forward to see you on the next episode of Open Studio. Bye bye. So this is it. I hope you loved this episode. You can find me, the host of the show, on social networks at Martina Flor on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. If you have a question or comments, go to martinaflor.com slash podcast, where you can see previous episodes, find show notes, and send voice memos with your comments and questions. You can also watch these episodes on YouTube. Just go to martinaflor.com slash YouTube to find them. You can, of course, listen to all our episodes on your favorite podcast platform. If you loved this episode, subscribe to this podcast. And if you leave us a review, it will help others find us. Thank you all for listening and see you in the next episode of Martina Flores Open Studio. Bye-bye.